there's an awesome back and forth exchange. You really see like the conversation unfold and go to deeper levels as it does so. So without me talking anymore, let's go ahead and dive in and then I'll give some of my thoughts on the back end. Enjoy. Uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, first, if morality is derived from God, then how do you account for different standards of morality among different countries and civilizations and over different periods of time? Yeah, excellent question. I think C.S. Lewis question. investigated that very question quite well in his book, The Abolition of Man, where he says that although there are differences among the periphery, he says that all major civilizations have agreed on an essential moral code. That you can't think of a society where say it was considered good that you double-crossed all the people kindest to you or that you ran away from your friends in battle. He said, you might as well think of a place where two plus two equal five. You will not find a culture like that. But actually, the argument for morality doesn't require human agreement. If everybody disagreed with morality, that wouldn't mean that morality is somehow subjective. Imagine this, imagine the Nazis had won World War II, Matthew, and took over the entire world and convinced everybody that murdering Jews was a good thing. Would that make it a good thing? Of course not. No, of course not, right? Because there's a standard beyond us. If we have morality wrong, that's not God's fault. That's our fault. See, that would be more sociology rather than morality, how people behave. We're talking about a standard even if we disagree with the standard, it still exists. But then you assert earlier in your presentation about science, how science doesn't say anything, scientists do. It's a similar issue here with morality because sure, th there might be a God who sets specific moral standards, but that ultimately means nothing if that's not how people view society. Well, no, because people have their free will to say that we're not going to follow the moral code. For example, we were just talking about abortion. You know and I know that when you, if you, if you and I were right here and saw a, a live baby being dismembered, we would immediately understand intuitively that's wrong. However, we might suppress the truth about that because we want the convenience of not having a child in our lives. And we can suppress the truth. We all suppress the truth. It's not a matter of our, of our cognition. It's a matter of our resistance to the implications of what the right thing is. We understand dismembering babies is wrong but we may suppress that so we can have the convenience of getting someone out of our lives we don't want in our lives. But again, sure, we may have that objective standard of morality set by a god, but that doesn't mean anything here on earth if that's not how we live and that's not how we view morality. That's still what's more relevant to us. For example, you bring up uh, the Nazis repeatedly, how without a god setting morality, then we can't prove that the Nazis were evil but still, we know Nazis were evil because we all collectively agree that what they did is bad. It's a standard of morality that exists because we agree that exi it exists. So if, again, if you, what you just said, though, just contradicted what you said earlier, because you said if, if the Nazis yeah, had won and convinced everybody that murdering Jews was, was right, you admitted that would still be wrong, even if everyone collectively agreed it was right. Sure, if everyone in that hypothetical world agreed it was right, I would still know it's wrong because I accept the societal standards and I understand. Well, wait, wait, the difference Matt, no, the societal world. standard was murder Jews. That's the I'm Nazi talking about society. the societal standards of morality within our life, within the real world. Well, the Nazis were part of the real world. What do you mean? Yes, but they didn't win. They didn't convince everyone on the planet that what they did was right. And we know 
because everyone agrees that murder is bad, that we know that mass murder is also bad. Okay, it's like the uh, philosopher Simone de Beauvoir asserts in her essay, uh, Pyrrhus and Cineus, that ultimately, regardless of whether there is a God or not, there cannot be such thing as standards of morality set by God because it's ultimately what we agree it to be and what we agree it to be can change and can be wrong. Okay, but you're, conf you're going back at what you said earlier. That's the problem. Because you said earlier that it, the Nazis would be wrong even if everybody agreed that what they were doing was right. Yes, That's and I'm saying that from the perspective of my life in the world where they didn't win. We okay, okay, hang on, hang on. Let, let me finish the thought, Matthew. That would just be your opinion then. Yes, ultimately, morality is an opinion. It's okay, the societal stop right. opinion. All right, then stop right there. If it's just an opinion, then the Nazis weren't really wrong, correct? The Nazis were wrong because we all agree they were wrong. No, it's, I, there, was also a, there was also millennia in history when people agreed that slavery was right. Yet, yeah. looking back on those times, we, we don't today agree that slavery was right. Okay. We know it was right. wrong so let's, because let's, the societal standards the Nazis morality for just a second, Matthew. Let's just stay on the Nazis for just a second, okay? So you're saying that the Nazis weren't really wrong because the standard is just human opinion. And so if everybody, all humanity decides murdering Jews is right, you're going to say that's okay, correct? I mm -hmm. would not say that's okay because okay, well, I'm speaking you're contradicting from the perspective your premise. of our morality. You're what? contradicting the premise then, Matthew. Even the, either the society decides what's right or there's a standard beyond society that is right. right. And therefore, you can judge societies by that standard, which is your view. Yet, ultimately, we can't judge societies by right. that standard because we can't possibly know that standard in this life. E even uh, drawing morality from the Bible, we have fundamental disagreements on the interpretation of different passages, such as uh, you... Okay, I, hang on, hang on, Matthew. We, we can't go down a rabbit trail here. You just a few minutes ago had said that everybody agreed murder's wrong and therefore mass murder's wrong. But now you're saying that people can't agree what's right and wrong. So which is I'm it? I'm saying we can agree. I'm saying we can't know for certain if there is a God, what that God believes to be right and wrong. We simply cannot know that in our lives. Why? Why do you say that? Because ultimately what morality comes down to is what people agree it to be. For instance, we, uh, a lot of people dr draw their morality from the Bible and we agree on core issues of biblical morality, but we can still debate certain aspects of it. Oh, For instance, oh, like when you say that, uh, when you say that uh, homosexuality is wrong, that it's against God, yet the very passage that derives from is itself up for debate. For instance, uh, we okay, talk uh, about- Matt, 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 we, we, we can't go down every one of these. We, we, we got to finish anyway. But if I gave you a book, would you read it? I, uh, sure, sure. <laughs> Scout's honor, you give me a book, I will read it. Okay, pretty funny ending to the clip there, but I want to kind of just break down really the substance of that conversation. It's actually very simple, even though they went back and forth a number of times. There really are two options. Either morality has been given to us from above by God, in which case it is objective because God is actually able to say this is how things ought to be and therefore that is how things ought to be. Now, I will grant to you that that implies that you, I mean, you must have a belief in God in order to believe in that. But I'm saying if there is a God, meaning an ultimate source of reality, of truth, of goodness, of beauty, of the universe itself, then he can say two plus two equals four and it is. And he can say that murder is wrong and it is. Or, so that's the top-down method of morality, which is the objective moral um, understanding. Or, morality has kind of evolved from the bottom up, and society has decided that murder is wrong. Society has decided A, B, and C. But if it is just from the bottom up, then it will always be subjective. You can't have something that is just a byproduct of time and 
matter and chance and biology and utility and Darwinian theory and all these things, it can't be a product of, of evolution in a sense in a materialistic model and be objective. So either morality is objective and it is given to us by God from above or it is subjective and it has arisen from the bottom up. The problem is this. We all know deep down that morality is not subjective. We know that there are things that are absolutely wrong. And we can think of examples of this, you know, torturing a, a baby, you know, rape, murder. These things are wrong, not just because the majority of people agree that they're wrong, but they're implicitly wrong. And we, and we know this in the same way that two plus two equals four, whether or not a particular society agrees. If there's a society that says that it's three and a society that says that it's five, it's still four. It's objectively four. It's ultimately four. And this is the same thing with morality. Now, there are obviously cultural expressions and there's gray areas and there's this and there's that. But to, to go back to their point about the Nazi party, um, if Hitler took over the world and convinced the majority of people that Jews are animals, and if Everybody came to agree on that, that they have no value, that they don't have human rights, and that the Holocaust is a morally justifiable um, event in history. It would still be a heinous evil, even if 100% of people were convinced to the contrary. So morality is objective, and we know this at the deepest level. So then finally, because morality is objective, and because objective morality requires there to be a moral law giver it follows logically that there is a moral lawgiver, that there is actually a God. And so ultimately, objective morality, this whole conversation about morality is, is incredibly useful to illuminating the fact that there also must be a God. And so ultimately, I think this conversation is great. Um, and I would love to hear, I know people in the comments, I'm expecting it, I'm anticipating it. People are going to have, um, I think, some disagreements with that. And so I, I welcome those. I want to hear those. I've seen those in other videos, but I haven't really effectively seeing anybody actually dismantle that that core um, basically syllogism and so with that being said i'll see you guys in the next one don't forget to like subscribe comment turn on the not notification bell all the things that tell you through youtube algorithm that this content is the kind of content that you like to see i hope you do see you guys in the next video peace bye